One thing you will have plenty of time to do in prison is read. So let's talk about it. Hey, what's up everybody? Shout out to all the law-abiding criminals out there. As always, if this is your first time on the channel, you know what to do. Go ahead and subscribe. Click that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Also, you can pick up a copy of my book, Strength and Conviction from Prison to Positive Change. And this is it. So yeah, today's video is going to be about the five most popular books that prisoners read on the inside. And off the top, I just want to go ahead and say that this may not be the same everywhere. I do realize that there are differences between state and federal. For example, a couple of these books on this list you can't even get in some of the state prisons. When I was in Georgia prison, you could not get 48 Laws of Power, Behold a Pale Horse, and things like that. So, before I give away too many spoilers here about what the books are, I'm going to go ahead and jump right into it. If you are interested in any one of these books and you want to pick yourself up a copy, you can do that on Amazon. The links to each one will be in the description of this video. Now, these books are in no particular order. I'm not listing them from important, you know, to least important or anything like that. And this is just collectively, from my personal knowledge, I've done time in South Carolina Department of Corrections, Georgia Department of Corrections, and the Federal Bureau of Prisons. And in my experience, these are the five books that I have seen the most, that the most, guy, most guys excuse me, have, and they seem to be the most coveted books, the ones that everybody wants to read on the compound. So, number one, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill, which was originally published in 1937. This was one of the first books that was published on the Law of Attraction, basically stating that your thoughts have an extreme power and what you think is going to reflect in your reality. Basically, what you put out is what you are going to attract in your life. This book was based on 13 principles that he put down that led you to the mastery of your thinking, which in turn could cause you to grow financially rich, spiritually rich, whatever it is that you choose or desire. My own personal favorite part of this book, which I will be saying about each one of these books because I have read them all. So my favorite about Think and Grow Rich was in the very beginning, I do believe the first two chapters, he tells you to write down an exact amount of how much money you want, set a definite date and time to make it happen, Say the steps that you are willing to put in, the work that you are willing to give to make that goal happen, and read it out loud every single day when you wake up and before you go to bed. Number two is The Art of War by Sun Tzu, originally written in the 5th century BC. Sun Tzu was a general, he was from China, and he was basically one of the most renowned generals on war that there was. He was a war strategist and he was excellent at the job. The book is 13 chapters and it is, you know, each chapter is dedicated to a different aspect of war. For an example, there's one on the ground and the land surrounding you and how to operate there, uh, strategy, different types of things. My favorite part of this book was the story of the king's concubine. So basically, King Wu, I think his name was, brought Sun Tzu in and he wanted a demonstration and he wanted to test Sun Tzu's power. So he asked Sun Tzu, will this work on women? Sun Tzu replied, yes, it will. So he sent out a large company of women, and two of his favorite concubines were the leaders over the women. Sun Tzu was the general. Sun Tzu gave them clear direction on what he wanted them to do, and when it came time to execute, they just started giggling. So he said first... If the order is not understood, it is the fault of the general. So he gave them clear instruction again and again. They started giggling and failed to execute the command. At that point, he said, hey, if I give you clear instructions and you understand, it is the fault of the officers, which was the king's favorite two concubines. The king saw what was about to happen. He sent down people to try to save them. Sun Tzu refused and he had them beheaded. Number three is Behold a Pale Horse, written by William or Bill Cooper. It was published in 1991. This book is basically a big book of government conspiracies. It's filled with a lot of what Mr. Cooper called proof of certain things that the government had been hiding from us, like um, proof that there were aliens, 
proof that there was a psychological warfare from the government going on against his own citizens. And there's a huge number of people that believe he was on to something because in 2001, he ended up getting killed in a shootout with the cops. They were saying that he was on the fugitive most wanted list for something, I think, tax evasion. And when they came to arrest him, supposedly he shot one of the officers in the head, got in a shootout, and they killed him. Now, my favorite part in this book is called The Protocols of the Wise Men of Zion, or as some people know it, The Protocols of the Elders of Zion. And the reason why it's my favorite is because supposedly it came from documentation of a group meeting that some Jewish people had, and they are supposedly the families that actually run the whole entire world. But it goes on, you know, into a lot of depth about some of the tactics that they use in order to brainwash the populace, the masses, into doing exactly what they want them to do. And in this document, they refer to all of us, the regular population, as goyim, which is just the Jewish word for cattle, I do believe. And they talk about a lot of things in this document that is over 50 years old, things that are actually going on today, like how they can control the mass media and religions and everything else and have us fighting each other and disagreeing with each other excuse me, with each other. And so basically, I found that part to be very, very interesting. If you get a chance to read this, check it out, because, I mean, you will see so many things in this document that is actually happening today. Number four is Rich Dad, Poor Dad by Robert Kiyosaki, or Kiyosaki, however you pronounce his name, I'm not really sure. But published April 1st, 2000, extremely good book it's a financial book um it's basically about the story of robert kiyosaki's two dads he had one dad who was a lifelong student and teacher he was actually a professor at the university i do believe that he was teaching finance but then he also had what i guess he would call not his adoptive dad but uh somebody that he took up with and was close to who was a business owner and an investor type on the island of hawaii and this book just goes in and talks about the differences in his two dads. And it paints a picture of, you know, our country and our economic system and how it works and what we're being taught to believe from a young age about money and how the system works. My favorite part of this book is that it just basically shows you Robert's real dad was a teacher of finance at the university, but he was broke. He was living paycheck to paycheck. He had no assets. And that was an eye-opener for me when I first read this book back in the early 2000s because it just showed me that there are so many people that are claiming to be teachers of things, but they have no real-world knowledge of what's going on. You're teaching finance at a college university, but you have a job. You are not an investor. You actually don't know how to make money work for you. And that was, hands down, one of the biggest lessons I ever learned in my life. And it's my favorite part of this book. And last but not least, if I had to vote out of these five books, which one would be the most popular? This one probably would get the vote. And that is The 48 Laws of Power by Robert Greene, published in 1998. This book is about power tactics and about how to use these 48 tactics in order to gain power in the world in any kind of arena, whether it be personal life, financial life, business, whatever. And my favorite part of this book is law number 34. Be royal in your own fashion. Act like a king to be treated like one. The reason why that is my favorite part is because it's so very true. In this world, you are going to be treated basically how you carry yourself. So if you are carrying yourself regally with respect, you are commanding that. You are not uh, vulgar and, you know, just acting like everyday people like everybody else does. Then you stand out. People are going to see you as something different. Now, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I can't tell you. But my favorite part of the book, because in this world, whatever you put out there is what you're going to get back. So if you act like a king, eventually you are going to get treated like one. I'm saying the 48 Laws of Power because it is hands down Robert Greene's most popular book. 
but he has several. He's got the Art of Seduction, which I would think would be the second most popular one. He also has the 33 Strategies of War, which I think would be tied for one of his other books called The 50th Law that he writ, <laughs> writ, wrote in cahoots with uh, 50 Cent. So he's got several. A lot of them are banned in some of the state prisons, especially the Art of Seduction and the 48 Laws of Power. They get an honorable mention here, but 48 Laws of Power is the most popular and there you have it the five most popular books in prison and my little favorite parts of those books a breakdown of each one a little bit i'm glad you guys tuned in to watch the video i tried to be as concise and brief as possible hope you enjoy the content until next time